Angle relationships. We've learned about linear pairs before. Now we're going to learn a little bit more. If two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. Before we've talked about being supplementary, and we've talked about linear pairs. So now we just have it written up as a conditional statement. If two angles are a linear pair, then they are supplementary. Two angles adding up to 180 degrees. If two angles form a right angle, then they are complementary. Complementary angles are two angles whose sum is 90 degrees. This makes sense since all right angles are 90 degrees. Therefore, if we add angles 1 and 2 in the picture, we would get 90 degrees. If two angles are supplementary or complementary to the same angle or congruent angles, then they are congruent. Also, if angles 1 and 3 are supplementary, looking at the picture, we have angles 1 and 3. You see as I connect them, they're obviously supplementary. And 2 and 4 are also supplementary. And 3 and 4 are congruent. Then 1 and 2 are congruent. So let's work our way through this one more time. The given information we have is angle 1 and angle 3 are supplementary. We are also given that angles 2 and 4 are supplementary. Finally, we are given that angles 3 and 4 are congruent. That would mean if these two are congruent, then the things that are supplementary to them are also congruent. So angles 2 and 1 are congruent to each other. If two angles are vertical angles, then they are congruent. We've learned about vertical angles before. Vertical angles are created by two lines which intersect each other. When we have two lines that intersect each other, we are left with the vertical angles. The angle on the top here would be congruent to the angle on the bottom. We could also say that the angle on this side is congruent to the angle on this side. We do need to be careful when talking about vertical angles though. Sometimes the pictures are a little bit misleading. Here we have a line then off of that line I have a ray and another ray. In this example we do not have any vertical angles. Even though we have the same situation where we have one angle over the other angle, this is not an example of vertical angles. Because to have vertical angles, we must have two lines. In this example, we have one line and two rays. Here's a question regarding vertical angles. Find all four angles measurements. In order to do this, we will set 5x plus 50 equal to 11x minus 70. The reason we can do this is because they are vertical angles and vertical angles are congruent. Now go ahead and solve this. We move the 5x over to the 11x. And then we move the 70 over to the 50. Lastly, we divide by 6, and we get x equals 20. Now, this did not answer the question. The question asks us to find the measurement of all four angles. What we need to do now is substitute. We're going to take the 20 and put it in for x. 5 times 20 is 100, plus 50 would give us 150 degrees. On the lower angle, when you insert 20, you will see that it is also 150 degrees. 
we are left with two more angles. How are we going to find those? Well, if you think back, we learned something about linear pairs. If you notice, I'm going to trace this line here and then a ray right here. We learned that this angle and this angle should add up to 180 degrees. Therefore, if the top angle is 50, it means the side angle here must be 30. And we learned on the last slide that if this is a vertical angle is 30 degrees, then this vertical angle over here is also 30 degrees. We now have the measurement of all four pieces. Our last example here says angles 1 and 2 form a linear pair. Angle 1 is x minus 4. Angle 2 is 2x minus 5. The question is to find the measure. Remember that little m in front of the angle sign means the measure. The measure of angle 1 and the measure of angle 2. In order to solve this problem, we have to go all the way back to the beginning of the problem where it tells us that angles 1 and 2 form a linear pair. A linear pair means that they add up to 180 degrees. They are supplementary. So we're going to take angle 1, x minus 4, add that to angle 2, 2x minus 5, and that should be 180 degrees. Now it's time to solve. x plus 2x is 3x. Negative 4 minus 5, or minus 4 minus 5, equals 180. Add the 9, and we finally have 3x equals 189. We have one step remaining, and that is to divide by 9, or excuse me, divide by 3. 189 divided by 3 gives me 63. we now have the value of x. Our last step, once we know the value of x, is to take that value and substitute it back in. Our first equation says x minus 64. So for angle 1, we're going to do 63 minus 4, which is 59. There's the measurement of angle 1. Now for angle 2, we're going to put 63 in for x and subtract from or, and subtract 5. 2 times 63 is 126 minus 5 is 121. So we see the measurement of angle 2 is 121 degrees. The nice thing is we can actually check this. If we look back at the beginning again, we know they are a linear pair, which means angle 1 plus angle 2 should equal 180. Angle 2, angle 1, when added together, gives us 180. It does work, so we must have done it correctly. That is the end of today's lesson. If you have any questions, make sure to write them down and bring them to class tomorrow.